when I went for the CCMP voice and it was five exams, that was way harder than, than this, in my opinion, because you had one exam for applications, one exam for troubleshooting, one exam for, you know, really understanding call routing and CUCM. So you had to know it better than compared to this exam. That's, that's just my, my two cents on it. Hello and thank you for coming to check out this video. Recently I took the Collaboration Core exam and I was actually pretty fortunate and I passed it. But now that I've passed the exam, I had a couple questions that I wanted to talk about myself, but also I figured other people out there would have questions as well. So I asked for those questions from groups on social media. And in this video, I'll be addressing those different questions. So here are some of the topics that I'll be covering such as, uh, can you tell me why you took this exam? There's a reason why I made that the first question, um, because I think that that's pretty important. And then, um, you know, is this the new test in February? Is it free or paid? We'll also be covering some of these other questions as well. And then again, some more questions. So jumping into the first one, can you tell me why you took this exam if you're already a CCIE? There's a number of different reasons. For starters, I'm helping write one of the official cert guides for the CCMP collaboration concentration exam, which is CLACM, you know, advanced call control and mobility. So I took that exam to make sure that our book is, is in the ballpark for helping people pass the exam. Once I passed that CLACM exam, I only needed to pass the core exam to get my CCMP collaboration. And on top of that, I've never had the CCMP collaboration. I had my CCNA voice, I had my CCMP voice, and then I got my CCIE collaboration. And I always kind of wanted to get around to getting my CCMP collaboration when it was four exams. Uh, back when I got the CCMP voice, it was five exams, but I never got around to doing that. So now it was pretty much right at my feet. Take one exam, see if you can pass it, get your MP collaboration. That's one of the reasons. The other reason is that I like helping other people get certified. I like helping other people learn. And if I'm going to mentor people for this exam, I probably should go and take it myself and make sure that I know what I'm talking about. And then on top of that, of course, I'm making videos on my YouTube channel about this exam. Again, I should go and make sure that I know what I'm talking about and you know, leading people down the right path and not leading them astray. Another question I got was, is this the ex exams that came out in February? Yes, this is the collaboration core exam that you need in order to have your CCMP collaboration, but also it's a prerequisite to the CCIE collaboration. Short answer, yes, this is from the one in February. Is it free or is it paid? It is a paid exam. I don't know if there's any free ones out there that Cisco has which then opens up the door for the next question, how much is it? So it's a $400 US dollar exam. That's actually a $500 bill, which is a real thing, but I didn't pay 500. It was $400 exam. And for the folks that are watching this from around the world, you'll have to check your currency exchange. But even if you do the conversion, you know, I don't know if it's going to be less or more money depending on where you live. So I would imagine it will be in the, the area of $400 converted to your currency. So next we're talking about how is the layout of the exam. It is still pretty much the old one. You can see in the top right that there's the time and that there's the number of questions. And then in the bottom, you can click next, but also in the bottom left, which isn't here on the screen, you can click end exam. This is a screenshot of the uh, practice exam that you can do when doing your system test. If you go through to do that on the Pearson website, how much time was there for the exam? So here on the website, it actually lists out 120 minutes. You can add another 20 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes for surveys. I didn't end up using the full 120 minutes, but it was a long exam. I remember sitting there and thinking, man, I must be towards the end of the exam. I was only about halfway through when I checked. So um, make sure that you clear off enough time for taking this exam. So is the test specific to the 
12x version. Yeah, the, the exam is based off of the 12x version, but what's really in there uh, other than a number, right? Because when you're looking at the differences, when you're looking at the exam topics, and you're looking at what's different between the exam topics in version 11.5 and before versus 12x and whatever's available right now, 12.0 12 and 12.5, um, there's, there's really not much. You still configure devices the same way. DHCP is the same. TFTP is the same. NTP infrastructure, you know, having to know about sizing. A lot of the stuff is the same. So if, if you don't have experience with 12X, but you have experience with earlier versions, I, I don't think that there's really, th this isn't something to, to let get in the way of you taking the exam. If you feel ready for it, you know, don't even worry about the fact that it's based off of 12.5. All right, so somebody said to me, I've been studying, and they let me know that they studied CIPT1, CIPT2. They're reading the OCG for the collab core exam, which a lot of people keep asking about, where is it? Where is it? On O'Reilly, you can get the rough cuts, which um, I took that screenshot of the rough cuts from the O'Reilly site. And they said that they've also been doing some lab stuff using VMware. Would that be enough to pass? I would say that you are pretty well on your way. But from what I remember, even studying CIPT 1 and 2, which I didn't, I don't think I studied those. I studied maybe the ones that came out before that. Um, I didn't know SIP signaling well enough for this particular exam and blueprint, and I didn't know SDP well enough. So if, if you've done all of what you said you've done, then, uh, I would say that what could help you is going through probably the trace reading video playlist that I have, because I get into talking about the SIP signaling and we talk a little bit about the SDP as well. There's also a DTMF video where I talk about that. That's going to be a value for you. And then there's also a Wireshark, you know, troubleshooting audio quality issues with Wireshark video. And that also I think will help you as well because all of those pretty much revolve around understanding SIP signaling and understanding media negotiation and codec negotiation. Right. So now we now we go on to is um are the gateway questions covered all in SIP and SDP, or do I need to brush up on my MGCP? To answer this question, I went straight to the blueprint. You can see here that they do talk about configure and verify MGCP. They also still have ISDN technologies on there for PRI and BRI. Um, as you can see, the as they call it, the domain, there's domains and tasks, if I remember the, the verbiage correctly. So 3.0 is worth 15%, as you can see here on the screen. There's 3.1 A through D, and there's 3.2, 3.3, 3.4, 3.5. So all of that, 15% of the exam is divvied up among all of that. Kind of lets you know how heavy, how heavy they're gonna be on MGCP, right? Now, um, whether or not SRST is included in the exam topics, again, the blueprint, there is no SRST on the blueprint, so you don't have to worry about that. As you can see, I put a red X through the SRST here on the screen. And then, uh, did you take the exam online? Yes, this is one of the online exams. It's available for you to take from home. I did that when I took the exam. And uh, is it mandatory to pass the CCNE collaboration prior to clearing the two required exams for the CCMP collab? or can you go directly to taking the CCMP collaboration exams? There is no prerequisite to taking the CCMP collaboration exams, and the CCNA collaboration used to be made up of these two exams here, CICD and CIVND. Both of those have been expired. The CCMP collaboration is no more, sorry, the CCNA collaboration is no longer a certification. It's these two tests are gone, and you just go straight to taking your CCMP exams in order to get certified in Cisco Collaboration. Moving on to the next slide, this is a continuation where we talk about the prerequisites. And it says there's no formal prerequisites for the CCMP Collaboration, which is you know what I was just saying. Was it hard? Now, this is a relative question, right? Because 
Had I taken this exam back in 2013, yeah, it would have been pretty hard for me. If I would have taken it back in 2015, it would have been relatively hard. But again, around that time, I didn't know SIP signaling or anything like that. Now I know my SIP signaling better. I know media negotiation better. Um, with all of that said, I did feel as though it challenged what I do know, but I feel as though it was, was a fair exam. I feel as though it was a well done exam. Now, um, when I went for the CCMP voice and it was five exams, that was way harder than, than this, in my opinion, because you had one exam for applications, one exam for troubleshooting, one exam for, you know, really understanding call routing and CUCM. So you had to know it better than compared to this exam. That's, that's just my, my two cents on it. Other people might not agree, but uh, if you've been in the field for a while and if you had your CCMP collaboration or even your CCNA collaboration, I would say that you probably mainly just need to brush up on um, understanding SIP well enough and understanding media negotiation, codex, uh, stuff like that. And I think you should be good. If you don't pass, I think you should be relatively close to uh, passing or at least getting a good score. How many questions were on the exam? Um, I I remember it being over 100 questions, slightly over 100 questions, but I didn't see it listed anywhere publicly, so I, I don't know the exact number. I just, uh, I didn't really make too much of a note about that while I was in the exam, except for that it was over 100 questions. It wasn't anything close to like 150 or anything. It was low 100. And then is the official cert guides good enough to pass the exam? Um, here's the thing about the official cert guides. I help actually write exam questions for the CCMP collaboration. And back when the CCNA collaboration was around, I even helped write questions for that. However, now I'm helping write the official cert guide. So when I go to write exam questions, they tell me, hey, you can help on this exam, this exam, this exam, this exam, but you're helping write the official cert guide for this particular exam, Clackham. You can't write questions on that exam. You can't see the questions on that exam. You can't review them before it goes live. So when people are writing the official cert guide, they haven't actually seen the exam. They have to basically read the blueprint, look at how weighted each section is, and then also kind of rely on previous experience with exams. Because for me, I've taken so many collaboration exams that I know certain topics are just exam topics. There are going to be questions about this, either because they're easy to write questions on or it trips people up. Now, to really answer that question, I would have to say this. Myself, and another author for the advanced call control and mobility exam, we have both gone and taken the exam now that it's out. We've also both written our chapters for the book, so we're not changing anything. We just wanted to make sure that our stuff was, was uh, you know, going to meet what people expect of it. Whether or not other authors do that for their official certification guides, I'm not too sure. I know the guys over at CBT Nuggets, um, you know, Network Chuck, Jeremy Chora, all those folks. I know they went and took the exam, the CCNA, that they did a course on. I know David Bomble has gone and taken the exam. But I don't think that they're under any requirements to not see the exam, you know, before it comes live or whatever. So, uh let me just be honest. I've read official cert guides in the past where I went and took the exam after the fact and I was a little bit annoyed because I felt as though the book, how could it be the official certification guide? And I was so far off from passing the exam. And I studied the book really, really well. I guess my answer here is that it depends on who wrote the book and um, how knowledgeable were they? How many exams have they taken in the past? If they haven't taken many Cisco exams on collaboration in the past, then, you know, they, they don't know what's common questions, right? Um, now, 
why do I have this topology here? And why do I have the collab cert link at the bottom? That's because collab cert is awesome when it comes to getting your CCIE. So if you're going to go get your CCIE collaboration, if you want to save yourself a lot of time and headache and you want to have somebody who actually cares about you passing the exam, check out uh, Vic Malhi over at Collab Cert. The reason why I have a topology here is because I don't think that um, anybody who's going for a Cisco exam should skip out on labbing. You should definitely build a lab or at the very least use the material that's available on the Cisco DevNet to go about uh, studying, get, getting some hands-on, right? So just reading the OCGs, I don't think you'll make it. Go ahead and get some hands-on as well. So how to prepare for the exam? A little bit of what I just said. You gotta read up on, on topics. You gotta lab topics and really get to know them. Um, and to be honest, I always say that part of preparing for the exam is taking it. You might get lucky and pass. You might feel like I'm not ready to pass this exam. I actually felt that way about both of the exams, call it the uh, advanced call control and mobility, and then also on the collab core. I, I really was like going into the exam thinking, well, I might just fail this and then at least I'll know where I am. I got lucky and I passed. So even if you feel underprepared, not ready to take the test, go ahead and take it. You might surprise yourself and pass, but if you fail, at least you know you know, what, what, what they're doing on the exam. And you also know when you get your statistics back about how well you did in each section, you know where you're strong and you know where you're weak. So part of preparing for it is labbing, reading, and taking the exam. Moving on to the next one is, you know, a lot of people were asking, can you share the materials that you've used? I'm already doing another video where I'm going through all the different exam topics and you know, finding videos either by myself or by Kevin Wallace, documents that I've written that um, are specifically about the topic so that you don't have to sift through a lot of stuff. But there's also some sections of official documentation, the SRNDs, administrative guides, or whatever, that I am putting here in a text file. And that text file I'll eventually put up on GitHub. And uh, when I do a video talking about my study resources and what I did, uh, I will share that text file so that you can download it and have all the links for the different sections. Now, I can't speak exactly about the exam questions, but um, rather than talking about the exam, we'll talk about real world and we'll talk about what is needed in the real world. Like, for example, SNMP. We have it on this screen here. 1.5.a is SNMP. In the real world, nobody really does much with SNMP, but you would at least need to know a little bit about SNMP, but for the most part, you don't need to know SNMP. You do need to be able to say, if an employer asks you one or two questions about it, you need to be able to accurately answer those questions if you understand what I'm saying right now. All right, so uh, moving forward, we can talk about, you know, I want to start learning collaboration. Where should I begin? Um, the quickest way of getting hands-on would be using the DevNet box that I talked about, and I'll put a link up top. You can go check out that video where I explain how to get to it and how to use it. The other thing I would say to do is, is read. So reading and labbing, those two combined are going to drastically increase the amount of, of, of information that you learn and how quickly you evolve into being a voice engineer, a collaboration engineer. A, another good thing is uh, there's there's different groups out there on social media. Twitter's a good spot, but I think uh, from my experience, there are Facebook groups and there are Reddit groups that uh, seem to be the best at the moment for social media groups where people are either learning or interested in learning or actually already collaboration engineers and they all come together and work together towards the same goal. I'll end this video here so that I can start the next video where I'll talk about the exam topics and uh, basically we'll talk about them in the, in the real world and I'll talk about what resources are available to understand those different exam topics. I hope there was something of value in this video for you and I'll see you in the next one.